Welcome back to episode two of our Thermaltake LCS series. In the last episode, we discussed the basics of water cooling, what water cooling is, what it achieves, and some of the components that go into it. In this next episode, Stuart and I are gonna be discussing where to start with liquid cooling, what best suits your budget, what type of performance you're looking for, and going over in strict detail what you need in order to get the best results. So, when you're starting a new liquid cool build, What's the first thing that you should be looking for? So there's actually quite a few factors uh, if you're starting a new system. First you've got probably the price. Uh, you have, have to bear in mind that the sort of more in depth you do your build, sort of your custom fittings, you move off to one of these custom kits and then you start adding uh, uh, GPU blocks, uh, more reservoirs, it's going to really ramp up. So you need to sort of uh, do some research on what, what you can afford and sort of some, some of the main things you're going to want to cool. Uh, secondly, you've got what hardware you're looking to put in the system, uh, the size of the case, and what your system designed for. Are you building a gaming rig? Are you building a sort of a home uh, sort of workstation PC that, that you, you, you want to water cool? So there's quite sort of just those two main factors because you don't want to you don't want to buy a smaller case and buy too much hardware where it's really cramped. Mm -hmm. So as for the thermal tape line of things, Jeremy, what sort of cases could you be looking at for sort of a, a beginner who wants to start with a small system? Certainly, for a beginner starting out, our two best cases that are in that category are definitely the Core X1, the X2, as well as the V51. They cost around a hundred odd dollars and uh, they're actually really good starting points. You can easily fit in a 360 millimeter radiator into those and uh, that's a really good base start for you to, uh, to kick things off with. So as Stuart mentioned, budget and pricing is a big factor when it comes to LCS. For those of you wondering at home, a standard all-in-one cooler will set you back around 80 US dollars. The next tier up from that, a basic looped water cooling kit will cost you around $300. The tier up from that is a big leap and can cost you easily anywhere between 600 to over a thousand US dollars. So obviously that's a very big difference when it comes to pricing. So Stuart, if you were to go for a higher end configuration, what exactly are you getting for your dollar? All right, so as you said before, you can look upwards of 800 US dollars for a setup. So we'll go through some of the some of the main components and sort of the price of each individual component. So we'll start with the water box. So Thermaltake has a specific W2 and the W1. Is that correct? That's correct. So we've got the W2 here. So a water block these days will probably start off with about 60 to 70 US dollars and work up from there. So this one here is the the W2. It's quite hard to hard to see. We'll just take that off. So this is Thermaltake's newest sort of flagship cooler. So moving on to some of the other components. So we'll move over to the radiators. So we've got a relatively small radiator here. So this is a 120. Now these will go all the way up to say a 480 for, uh, for most standard users. You can get larger, but it's really hard to get cases to sort of support those ones. So these are your 120s here. I'm not sure how much these 120s will retail for, but for like a standard 360, you're looking at about, looking at about 80 to 90 US dollars for a good quality 360 mil radiator and then uh, they'll certainly sort of uh, go up a little bit higher as per each size you go up. So most extreme systems can have say three, four of those. So you can really see <laughs> that timesing $100 for four is there's $400 straight away. So that's where some of the cost comes into. Moving on to your other components. This here is your reservoir pump combo. So we've got our pump, which is down here. I'll just unscrew this. Okay, so this is your pump here. So you can get these either to attach into the reservoir or you can have these just run separately with the pump top and you can have your reservoir somewhere else. So you're looking at a standard pump. Now, these, these aren't actually sort of made by water cooling companies. These are made by uh, Lang. So this is actually sort of a, they're just the company that produces pumps for you. You can use them for irrigation, fish tanks. So uh, water cooling companies have actually adopted these uh, generic pumps into their into their equipment. So most other companies will give you different varied pump tops to allow you to install these um, onto your reservoirs or just uh, individually. So I haven't mentioned the price on these. So you're looking at a price for these, you're looking at probably about 50 US dollars for a pump, 50 to 60 US dollars. So most of the time you're only gonna need one pump. These ones are pretty powerful. Uh, if you're doing probably four to five radiators, you can look at doing a, uh, a second pump in series. All right, so moving on to the reservoir. Reservoirs are relatively cheap. They normally start at say $20 for a reservoir, depending what size. If you go for a really large one, I think you can get something that can nearly take a litre of coolant. Correct. So <laughs> the, those ones are gonna cost a little bit more, but really the a reservoir isn't gonna sort of affect the price too much. Um, and then you've got the pump tops. Bear in mind that when, when you get a custom or you're looking into a custom loop, you can't just buy the pump and expect to try and stick this in your system. Cause most of the times, as I said, the pump comes like that. You need to look into getting a pump top to fit the pump. 
So that's pretty much just this little thing here that allows you to secure the pump on with this ring. Most of the times these pump tops start at about $30, 30 to 40 US dollars, so they're not really too expensive um, in that area. The last thing or the main thing that's gonna affect the price is uh, or are the fittings. So these little things here, you probably think that now these won't affect the price too much, but this is where a lot of the uh, a lot of the money comes from in a custom build. So all these little fittings, I'm not sure how much the thermal take uh, fittings cost. I don't think they've actually released the price on them yet, but going from experience from other brands, you're starting to look at say uh, three to four US dollars for your more basic fittings, just like your single uh, non-rotary fittings, all the way up to say 10 to 15 US dollars. So bear in mind that unlike a water block where you just need one, you can't just buy one fitting. So you need things like uh, if you're doing some uh, just or tubing, you're gonna need upwards of 10 fittings to go, two in your CPU, two in your radio. Each device uh, normally takes two fittings. So each, uh, each component in your water cooling loop takes two fittings. So most of the time you're gonna need say 10 to 16 uh, fittings for say tubing. Then if you wanna move into more complex, you've got your things like your, your right angles. So instead of having a tubing sort of loop around, you can have a, a right angle so your tubing can just go uh, right and then straight out and another step that also sort of increases the price a bit is instead of just uh, Fittings that just screw straight in and don't move you've also got uh, Rotary fittings. so say you screw this in and if you didn't have a, a rotary fitting this right angle could end up at, at not facing the right way you want so because it's rotary you can actually uh, leave the the G quarter thread that's uh, that sort of st uh, stationary and you can actually rotate the fitting to 360 degrees on which way you want it. So it really gives you the more flexibility but you just have to bear in mind that the uh, the rotary, rotary fittings do cost a little bit more. There's a lot of possibilities you can do with our fittings and that really does sort of imply the cost of a uh, of your sort of full kit and then you've also got the newer the newer style area which a lot of people are doing is now the hard rigid tube. So you've got the flexi tube which has been around for God. Since the dawn of time? Decades or <laughs> yeah, been around forever. So then this newer hard style, so this is fully fully solid. It can be bent, but um, we just got a straight tube here. And this is the uh, the new thermal take uh, sort of hard rigid fitting. So all it does is just pop in pop in there. It's not compression like the uh, the fittings where it sort of clamps onto the onto the, the sort of the flexi tube. But this one simply just pushes straight in and then it just holds it like that and then You've probably seen builds around where we're actually building one now in an X9 and we're going to show you how sort of this tubing looks really nice in, um, in a larger style rig. So that's pretty most of the most of the things there. The only thing I haven't co covered is probably getting into a little bit more extreme are uh, your GPU blocks. So I believe these are brand new that's from Thermal Tape. So yep. at the moment they only support two, two line of, of, of cards. So this will support the uh, Asus uh, Strix GTX 980 and the Strix 970. So I'm um, really hoping that Thermaltake will bring out some more options for sort of maybe more reference cards, because at the moment you don't only have these on two cards, it's gonna be gonna be hard to supply to get these, but, uh, but we do have this installed in a rig we're gonna show this, it does look really nice. So moving on to sort of more, I don't know the cost of this because I don't think this is out on the market yet, but a GPU block will cost you upwards of 100, uh, probably 100, 110 US dollars as well. So you can really see that once you factor in all those items and say you have three uh, three gpus in a system uh, a few radiators uh, sometimes you need upwards of 20 to 30 fittings you can really see where the thousand dollars is it's sort of all be sort of broken down so now that we know the pricing of each component what exactly does every component do and what's its purpose in an lcs build oh right, so that's a good question so i'll start off with your all-in-one so as we stated before these are us start around 80 dollars for a system like probably a 240 millimeter, a little bit more for the 360, because I think this is the Extreme Water 3.0. Yep. I think this is the top of the line for a from thermal take. So this one, you've got your radiator. So that's simply, uh, the water will run through the radiator. Uh, it runs up and down a uh, little sort of, it's, it's hard to explain, but there's little runs inside the radiator. So it's the same sort of concept as the car, it just removes the heat, and then the fans will uh, cool the radiator, and then the cycle sort of starts again. So it's a continuous cycle, and then you've got the, the uh, water block on the bottom here and that sits on top of your CPU and then you just got the pump which uh, runs off the power and that's that's what drives the water through the system. Moving on to your sort of your Pacific RL240 kits and moving on to your more custom extreme level stuff 
this the components will be the same it's just the flexibility flexibility on what you can do will change and then of course the price so we'll move on to the your blocks you can use and what the uh, what the water blocks do so first off we'll start with your cpu block now we showed you this before on the prices so very similar to this one over here it does sort of it just sits on the cpu you screw it down now you've got your, your two inputs, so sorry, you've got your two actual ports. These are your G, uh, G one quarter or G quarter thread. So this is what your fittings will screw into. So with these blocks, there's always an in and an out because they have these set up to perform better where, which way the water will flow over. So they've got little fins inside. I don't know how many are in this block, but most blocks are very. So the, the water will go in one direction and then out the other direction. And it just flows through a series of, of uh, fins inside, a copper fins, just to remove the heat from the CPU as fast as possible. Uh, moving on to your GPU block. So you don't have an in and an out dedicated for a GPU block. Uh, you can use one for in, one for out, and then vice versa. And then you've got your cooling on the bottom here. So then you put your thermal paste on. So these are very similar to this. They're just no, no dedicated in and out spot. Moving on to the pump. The pump is pretty self-explanatory. Pretty much all it does is move the water around your system. Just a good note when doing a water cooling system, you always want your pump sort of at the bottom of your system, sort of the lowest end point. Like, bear in mind, it doesn't have to be down on the bottom corner of your case. It normally just has to be under the, the reservoir. It doesn't have to be joined to the reservoir like this setup. It just has to be lower. And I always stick to the rule that I always like to have my, my reservoirs feeding down towards the pump, just so you've always got uh, coolant uh, sort of forced down onto the pump. So if you've got this like this and you've always got your reservoir full, you're never gonna have your pump dry because you, you can't run these ones dry. If you start running them dry, just for, e just for even a few seconds, they'll sort of seize up. They always need fluid running through them. But um, so I guess the difference with uh, doing a full custom kit as to getting this uh, the water cooling kit, you actually get the pump included. So that takes a lot of hassle out of sort of finding which pump you need, uh, which pump top. So the good thing with this kit, it has the pump, it has the right pump top and the reservoir top all ready to go, which is included. Uh, moving on to the reservoir. Reservoir is simply just to hold your, hold your coolant. It, is, it sort of holds the spare coolant. So if you didn't have a reservoir, there'd be no real way to sort of fill up your system. If you just had tubes, you wouldn't be able to get like the coolant in there because when, when you're filling up a system, I normally just start filling, filling up the reservoir. You turn it on, it goes down a bit. You fill up the reservoir again, you turn it on and it goes down a bit more until the system's completely full. So if you didn't have the reservoir, you wouldn't be able to do that. And having a reservoir is a really cool way to, to sort of show off your coolant, your different coolant. And it's always cool to, uh, to stick a few reservoirs in. Now moving on to the radiators. So as I mentioned, radiators are the same, even in your all-in-ones. All they do is remove the heat uh, from the uh, coolant. So it just runs, I don't know if you can see a shot in there, but you can see that this this radiator has lots of lines running up it, so the coolant does run up and down these little lines, and you can see through the uh, see through the port there where it would run through those lines, and then it just disperses the heat um, through these fins, and then the fans just cool the radiator down, and that's how that works. So yeah, these come in all different sizes. This is rel your relatively small size here. All right. So last but not least, we have our fittings and our tubing. Now these sort of work together. You need to make sure you get the right size tubing to fit the fittings. Now, with an all-in-one setup, you don't have to worry about this, so you can see that the fittings are sort of, they're sort of stuck, they're hard, sort of secured in. You can't take these off, so you can't expand this, you can't make it longer, you can't make it shorter. So that's how that comes. So with a custom setup like this, um, this is another good idea with a water cooling kit. They've actually done the homework for you, so you've got the, you've got the, this is actually tubing out of the kit, so you've got enough tubing in the kit, and it also comes with six of the fittings ready to go. So you know that they're gonna screw on, and they actually are the compression fittings, so they are the nicer ones that look good. But yeah, you do know that they're gonna fit in and they're all gonna work. And then moving on to doing it all yourself. Um, a few things to note with fittings. So first off, you've got the thread size. So pretty much 90% of gear these days will all use G quarter thread. So you can see on the blocks here, on the reservoirs, pretty much everything has a minimum of two G quarter thread. So that's for you in and your out. So fittings these days can come in many different sort of thread sizes. So you've got G quarter and then you've got some other sizes, but pretty much these days, 90% of places where you find them will just be G quarter. So it's always good to note, uh, it does say G quarter thread size, just so they're gonna be compatible. And then they just sort of screw in into your blocks and other devices. So that once you've got that end sorted, you then need to work on your other end. So with fittings, you've either got the other end can be another G quarter thread to put on another G quarter thread device. So say it's like a, so it's like a fitting for some hard tubing, 
And then once you've got that sorted, you then need to think of the end that's going to be connecting to the tubing or your hard tubing. So for uh, tubing sizes, you have the uh, end fitting as in half inch, you've got 3 8 inch, so that's simply the, the size that will fit into the tubing. And then you've got your uh, outer dimensions as well, especially for uh, foot, uh, foot uh, compression fittings, you need to make sure you get the uh, you get the in and outer diameter matched with the tubing in and out of the diameter, because as you can clearly see, this one's not the right sizing, because this isn't matched with this tubing, and you can't get it to fit on. So then moving on to your rigid tubing. So the, the main sizes for these, the tubing comes in 12 millimeter thickness, or 16 millimeter. So I believe the thermal tank stuff is the 16 millimeter, mm -hmm. and these are the matched 16 millimeter uh, that's the outer dimensions because the tubing actually pushes inside. So as long as you get those two dimensions right, you'll then be able to secure the, uh, the hard tubing into the fitting. So if we are looking at building something that's very high end, what are the benefits that are associated with going with the more custom fittings? All right, yeah, that's, a, that's another good question because you don't just want to throw in a lot of gear and not have it work properly and, and the way you want it. We won't cover on the all-in-one because we've all already sort of covered that and what sort of person that's suited for. So moving on to sort of a kit like this. So we said this was uh, your around 300 uh, US dollars. So this will allow you to do one CPU, gives you enough fittings, uh, gives you the tubing and actually comes with the coolant as well. And then you also get the uh, pump and the reservoir combo. So that, that'll still allow you to overclock your CPU uh, pretty much as high as you want. It does come with a 240 millimeter radiator. So for one CPU, a 240 millimeter radiator is all you need. Now these radiators are quite thick. These are your, I'd say these are your 60 mil radiators. So the uh, cooling performance of those would be much better than say something you're thinner, say like 20, 25 millimeter radiators. So the only thing that the water cooling kit doesn't come with is your GPU block. Now the issue with that is GPU blocks will vary um, from brand and series of video cards. So because everyone has a different video card, it'd be nearly impossible to get one in a kit to match your video card. Now there are companies that have universal blocks. It does uh, fit quite a few video cards, but because our companies these days are bringing out non-reference video cards like your Strix series and things like that, you really need a dedicated video uh, block for that video card. So it's probably good they've left that out. It gives you the flexibility to, you could uh, try this. If you are happy with the performance and how it goes, you can then purchase a water block later on. And because this is a custom kit, you can just simply buy two more fittings. Um, if you use your tubing, you can buy a little bit more tubing and you can just drain the system, fit your GPU block, uh, fill it back up and then you're good to go. Now moving on to your more extreme system, as we said, the starting at say up to $800 and more. Um, the sort of advantage is that if, if you're going for a multi GPU system, some things are gonna cost you that money um, just because you wanna go with a high end system. So if you go for three GPU blocks, you go for a high end CPU block and you're gonna need quite a few radi radiators to cool all that. So you're pretty much forced to spend quite a bit of that money. Mm -hmm. But then you can even spend more money on that if you like. So people go over the top with radiators, they just like to put fans on them. They want the best performance they have. Like there's no real need to put four or five radiators in a system, especially most people are just gonna be cooling a CPU and two video cards. Like you'd still be able to use uh, two radiators on that and get the same performance. But People like, like the looks of them. Then you've got things like fitting. people, fittings. People can spend a fortune on fittings, different colors. And then you've got your hard tubing. Uh, people are starting to bend these, uh, do crazy designs, and just go just go all out. And you've probably seen some of the, the Core X9 double stacked ones on their website, and you can see how crazy they look. So not only do people uh, spend a lot of money on just the performance, uh, they sort of treat it as a hobby. So they like to, when something new comes out, they like to upgrade, new fans come out, new red editors. They just like the look and like to show off their builds. And with that, we conclude another episode in our Thermaltake LCS series. In our next episode, Stuart and I start from scratch with the Core X9 and show you how to transform it into something amazing with liquid cooling. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next episode.